It is General Leia Organa Saturday evening. Come, let us meditate like a Jedi. An individual lamented on Reddit that they are, they are studying and practicing a plethora of meditations, and they don't know which one to emphasize. That reminds me of a passage in the foundational text of Dzogchen, and I'm going to paraphrase. There are many methods, and many of them are powerful, but only one will enlighten. At first blush, that could sound um, elitist. until one understands how the brain works. The part of the brain that focuses and the part of the brain that reasons is lovely, but it's frail, it's not robust. And when overused, it triggers our, the part of our brain that is the seat of anxiety and aggression like clockwork. You can set your watch by it. The part of the brain that is the most robust has evolved to notice in a special manner, vulnerably, passively, viscerally, randomly, and fleetingly, in harmony with our inhalation. Its sibling part of the brain has evolved to physically relax and mentally release in harmony with our exhalation. Whether you read the words of Gautama, the Buddha, whether you read the uh, Anapanasati Sutta or the seven enlightenment factors or um, the vast expanse of the diamond-like mind, you will see over and over and over again that the, the path is to passively, vulnerably notice and release in harmony with our inhalation and our exhalation. In the Buddha's time, according to lore, he had a cousin, a foolish cousin, who was pretty much the opposite of the Buddha. Was that now was the Buddha and his foolish cousin real or archetypical? I don't know. I don't care. They're useful teaching tools. It's good to experiment. It's crucial to notice the results of your experiment. If you're going to play with a, a number of techniques, then play with one technique every 12 hours for seven consecutive days. Notice that results, the effect of that technique upon your mind, upon your emotions, upon your resilience, and jot it down. And then explore the next technique. That is a very, very sound and scientific and rational way of evaluating what should be your main technique. And if you have the time and the energy and the bandwidth to do that, knock yourself out, have fun. I know that's what I did. I didn't do it on purpose, but that's what I wound up doing over decades of practice. You see, um, <laughs> there's a euphemism. I'm twice blessed. What that means is I have both flavors of uh, neurodivergence and with all the trimmings. What does that mean? Well, it means I have ADHD and autism compounded with uh, fetal alcohol exposure, birth trauma, brain damage, CPTSD, Ellis Danlos disorder, and then eventually complicated by Epstein Barr virus. All these uh, physical challenges have made my body into a bullshit detector. I did not meditate so I can be better than others. I meditated or studied meditation because I wanted to be less monstrous. 
because I wanted to have less psychotic breaks. I wanted to be less uh, domineering. I wanted to be less anxious. I wanted to be less cruel. I wanted to be less hysterical, for want of a better term. And so I experimented with many techniques. And the ones that I found that worked the best are the ones that are in harmony with Anapanasati Sutta or the seven enlightenment factors or the teachings of Prahevajara or the teachings of Yong Jia Shuan Jue. Those I found to be the most effective. I hope this helped.